So all of us have those things in our lives that give us goosebumps and um, are really awesome. Going to Louisville for Rita and I was a bit like that. She really had never been to the Presbyterian Center and um, ter thoroughly enjoyed that. And I um, enjoyed, we enjoyed the conference as well. Don't get me wrong. But there were these little side trips that added to it. Some things are just meant to be experienced and not analyzed and torn apart and taken apart. And one of my faults is I like to analyze everything. Um, but some things are just meant to, to wash over us and to be enjoyed like a really, really, really good meal. Now I know for those of you who are cooks, that's not true. You want to figure out what's in it and how do you make that. But for me, a really good meal, oh, I just like to enjoy a really, really, really good meal. For some of us and for all of us, a conversation that we might have had with someone, a conversation that becomes so intimate and so deep and so profound that time and space seem to fade away and it's as if the two of you are the only two people in the whole world is something that's just meant to be experienced. Not analyzed and torn apart or try to figure out how can we get back there again. But to be experienced and savored and remembered and enjoyed. An encounter with God. Those kind of encounters that overwhelm us with God's mystery and God's majesty and God's power and God's love and it might come to us in great big explosive ways or it might come to us in tiny little ways but it comes to us in a way that everything else fades away and we know we are in the presence of the Creator or of great overwhelming profound love were of the one who is able to put us back together and make us whole. Now I told you that my tendency is to want to analyze, to say immediately, what just happened there? I do it with worship services all the time. I spend Sunday afternoon unconsciously or consciously some days being over here does that. And we do it as well with meetings or with experiences we have or with events, we tear them apart and we say what just happened and we want to unpack it all and in unpacking it all we want to gain control over it. Isn't that why we do that? So that we can replicate it and do it again and some of that's very very important and very much needed in our world and in our lives. But when we take that habit and we apply it to our relationship with God well, I think that's when we get ourselves in a little bit of trouble. When we start to say, well, I want to define God. I want to think about God and, and um, unpack all of it. Whatever that experience was, it's our ten some people's tendency to say, that encounter with God, how can I make sense of it? And so we start to offer explanations of it, of how it might have happened, of what might have happened, and of how we got there, and what pieces of it were important, and what pieces of it weren't important, and what led us to that place. And we, we shape it, and we mold it, and in shaping it and molding it, we stop relating to God. And we start defining God. And instead of being in relationship with God, we talk about an idea or a concept or a precept. Or we think we know all there is to know about God. And that saddens me when we do that because it limits all that God brings to us in our relationships. 
I think that's part of where Peter and James and John were. I mean, this, the, our reading for today starts with six days later, and I confess to the uh, staff in the staff meeting when we re read this text that I wanted to know six days later than what? And it's six days later than a whole, after a whole series of events. It was the time when Jesus took his disciples off by themselves and says, who do people say that I am? And they gave him some answers. And then he said, who do you say that I am? And Peter was all proud when he said, you're the Messiah, the Christ, the, the Holy One of God. And he wanted, and Jesus says, that's right. And Peter wants a gold star. And now he thinks he's got it, right? I know who you are. I know what that means. And so when Jesus starts to say, I'm going to suffer. And I'm going to be arrested. And I'm going to die. And three days later, I'm going to be raised. Well, Peter thinks he knows. You know, just like us sometimes. We think we know. And so he starts to limit God, and he starts to limit Jesus in this case, and say, no, that's not what the Messiah is like, and no, you don't do that, and no, I know. Just like the demon earlier who said, I know who you are. But do they really? And do we ever really know the fullness of God? No. God is always more and greater and bigger and more loving and more forgiving and more merciful and more powerful than we ever imagined. And so six days later when Jesus takes them up on the mountain and they encounter this bright, shining Jesus. They're overwhelmed. They don't know what to say. They don't know what to do. And they want to build booths. And they want to stay up on the mountain. And just like all of us. And now they maybe have a notion that maybe they didn't understand all of it. And they see Moses and Elijah. And it is an event that they are going to carry with them through all the things that come next. Because all the things that come next are, they are leaving Galilee and they are headed to Jerusalem. And all the things that Peter said, no, 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 they're not going to happen. They're going to happen. They're going to happen. And a voice from heaven reminds them, this is my beloved. Listen to him. He knows. We carry around our encounters with the mysterious, amazing, awesome, overwhelming God and we need to carry those with us to remember them and treasure them and hold them in our hearts and in our minds so that when we go on our way to our... That's what's going to get us through it. That's going to help us. No amount of analysis is going to make it better and no amount of defining who God is is going to make it better. What is going to help us through that is to remember those encounters, those moments when we are overwhelmed by the presence of God. Whether it's in stillness or in awesomeness to remember to hold it in our hearts and say what just happened I was just in the presence of the one who made me and that's all I need to know Amen